Hi, God bless you. Uh, always having more to say. It looks like two videos today and I have a warfare training class tonight, but the Lord is busy. He's, he's, um, he's just filled me up with fire. Just fire. I don't even know what to do with it. It's like I'm bubbling, bubbling, bubbling inside and could explode. We better pray first. Amen. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for what you're doing and you're just on a roll, Lord. You're just moving and doing and and uh, bringing forth revelation and understanding into the body, Father, into your body, Lord. I pray, Father, that I would speak what you're having me to speak in a minute, that you would do it, that you would say it, and that you would be glorified in it. And we give you glory and praise. Ask for a blood covering right now over our body, soul, and spirit of myself and those that are watching, Father. Cover and protect them, Lord. Have their hearts open and ready to receive your word. And we give you praise, Father, for you're an awesome God, and we worship you. We exalt you. You are King of kings, and you are Lord of lords. And we just bow down before you, Father, for you are our King and our God and our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And that reminds me, um, you know, one time when I was praying and I said, Lord, you are, you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. And he said, he said it like this. He goes, I'm not just King of kings and I'm not just Lord of lords, but I am your King and I am your Lord. Oh my gosh, that was just so beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I'm just going to talk to you for a minute and share with you what's happening. I'd gone, I had gotten a beautiful word from a brother and I was going to forward it to a friend. Uh, it wasn't a prophetic word, but it was uh, a teaching and it was really, really good. When I went to forward it to a friend, I was told that I am prohibited by um, Yahoo from uh, emailing out, that I can still receive my emails. Well, of course, my first thought is the devil is a pig. If you know me or you're in my classes or you're familiar with some of the videos, you've heard me use that expression before. Most all my friends on Facebook have heard me say the devil is a pig. Now, I'm not talking about a pig, pig, like a like a animal pig. I'm talking about he is a jerk. He is out to destroy you. He is out to discourage you. He is out to do anything he can to cause you to stop serving the Lord. Whether he would tempt you to go uh, astray, to go after something that is not of God, or whether he would just put so many obstacles in your path that you just give up. Now, giving up in one sense is excellent. You want to give up as unto the Lord and let God direct your steps and your path. You can do nothing. We have to get to the point that we understand that we are dumb sheep in need of a shepherd. Now, if you think about sheep, what can they do for themselves to protect themselves against a wolf or against a lion, against a bear, what have you, against a predator? What can sheep do? Okay, I was told years ago, and I don't know if this is true, but I was told that when a, a sheep runs off a cliff, all the others will follow. And maybe that's true. I don't know. But I do know that when um, we do not understand who we are in Christ and who the devil is and what his plan is and what God's plan is, we're in a mess. We're just in a mess because the devil's desire is to destroy your life. Now, he does not care how long it takes. He doesn't care if it takes years and years of alcohol abuse, therefore destroying your liver. He doesn't care if it takes years and years of abuse of cigarettes, therefore destroying your lungs. He doesn't care how long it takes to destroy you, whether it is a little bit of time or it takes a long time because the devil has has been around for a long time and eternity is a long time for the devil and he's going to spend eternity burning in the lake of fire as it says in revelations so he wants as many people with him as possible and if he can get you to fall back into the world and serve him or be a puppet of his or be not effective for the kingdom of god that is just fine with him he prefers that the um, uh, Christians get depressed and stay in bed all day or get depressed and eat all day or get depressed and drink all day or get depressed and sleep all day. He, he doesn't care as long as you are focused on you. That is the devil's plan. Now he, he will use people to um, 
uh, let's say for example somebody is in the uh, entertainment industry okay and they're getting a lot of publicity and they're getting a lot of attention therefore they are focused on themselves and how they can make themselves greater that is also the devil working in both instances it is the devil making you God of your life because it's all about you when it's all about you you have become your own God when you focus on what you think you want you need it's all about you therefore you worship you now now that is serious that is very serious uh, I've been in uh, places where the person talks about themselves they focus on themselves they have become their own God they believe in themselves to supply for themselves uh, to make everything they need for themselves and what God is doing in this time is he's pulling the rug out he's saying it's not all about you you cannot supply for yourself you cannot make yourself happy you cannot put your self to sleep only God can relax you only God can give you peace only God puts the believers to sleep it says so in Psalms it's he that gives you a restful night's sleep if you're addicted to drugs if you're addicted to sleeping pills it's because you are out of the will of God because God will put you to sleep you have to understand who God is you have to dig in the word it doesn't matter if you study the Bible from the time you get up to the time you go to bed that is not what is important if you're doing the studying of the Bible from the time you get up to the time you go to bed and it's all in your brain and it's not going into your heart you have profited nothing if you have unforgiveness in your heart everything you're studying and reading is not going into your heart so there's absolutely no change in your life your heart is hard it has to be soft it has to be good soil for the seed of the word to get down in there it to be planted into your spirit to be planted into you and change who you are you will not be changed no matter how much you read the Word of God, no matter how much you pray and study, if you harbor bitterness, if you harbor resentment, if you harbor those things, you have opened your door up to more demonic activity in your life than you already have. If you think you're just fine, you're deceived. We are not fine. Nobody is fine. Nobody is perfect except the Lord Jesus Christ. If people have made you feel like you're not perfect, don't focus on you. Focus on God because you're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Only God is perfect. If you were perfect, you wouldn't need God. If you thought that you could do everything, if you believe that you can do everything, I'm sorry. You're going to find out sooner and sooner than you might imagine that you can't do everything. It is impossible. We are dumb sheep dumb sheep just accept it it's really not that bad if you're a dumb sheep this is what happens you need your shepherd Psalms 23 perfect example it says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want because the Lord Jesus Christ is my shepherd he leads me he guides me he directs me there's nothing wrong with that Satan puts puts um words in you know he says uh oh yes you need jesus because you can't do anything yourself you're just a cripple tell the devil to shut up it doesn't matter what the devil says the devil is a liar talk about cripple devil spending eternity burning in hell how smart is he we we have to we have to focus on the lord jesus christ it doesn't matter what the devil says the devil is a liar all day long he will get you to focus on you what you think you need and you want and as long as you're focusing on you you will sink okay you will sink you have to keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ and he will lift you up he'll put your feet on solid ground and let you go forward help you to go forward move in you it's in the Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says in his spirit in him I move and live and breathe and have my being it's in God it's not in man what can man do for me the Bible says in uh, Jeremiah 17 5 cursed is the man who relies on human flesh for his strength are you relying on human flesh are you relying on on anything other than the Lord Jesus Christ are you relying on human flesh are you relying on humans you're cursed you are cursed don't you feel like you're under a curse don't you feel like you're spinning your wheels don't you feel like maybe you were created for something better than this I'm not saying to think about your feelings so much, but don't you understand that God created you for a magnificent plan? He says so. He says so in uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you. Plans for hope, plans for good, plans for a future. I'm paraphrasing. You have to look up the verses. That's why I quote where they're at. He has plans for you, good plans for you. If you're not in a good plan, you're not where you're supposed to be. You're out of the will of God. 
if everything is just so terrible, 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 ask God to deliver you. Ask Him to lift you up. Find out what sins are in your life. The Bible says examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. See what is in there that does not bring Him glory. If you're living in a habitual sin, you're not glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a puppet of the devil. You're doing exactly what Satan wants you to do. Why would you do that? Because you can't stop on your own. You can't do anything in yourself. You have to surrender. You have to say, Lord Jesus Christ, take out of me all that is not of you. Anything in me that is not giving you glory, take it out of me. I want to bring you glory. You were created. To bring God glory. You were created to praise Him. You were created to have communion and fellowship with Him. The reason Jesus Christ came to die on the cross, the first words out of most Christians' mouth is, For my sins. You know what it was? It was to reconcile you to God. There was a wall, a dividing wall between you and God the Father. Jesus Christ, the mediator, came. And He is the one that is in the middle. It's through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. It's through Jesus, the opening of his flesh. You, you, he, is, he is the wall. The petition is his flesh. It's torn open. Now you can go through. Now you can th go through straight to God the Father. You can talk to God. You can speak to God. He is waiting for you. He's been waiting. And the older you are, the longer he's been waiting. He talks to you and you don't listen because you don't know how to hear his voice. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and they recognize it. Do you recognize the voice of God? Do you? You know, I talked to a group of kids one time and I was talking to the Lord about them not getting what I was saying and he said they can't tell the difference between their right hand and to their left hand. They can't tell the difference between the voice of God and the voice of the devil. And these are church kids. They don't know the difference. They can't tell. I'm like, Lord, what are we going to do? The Lord says, I've got it. I got it, Cheryl. Let me take care of it. You know, we don't have to be the fourth part in the Trinity. If somebody is telling you, you have to help God, God does not need your help. He needs you to be empty of you completely. So you, you, He's the potter and you are the clay. He's molding you and shaping you. You're a vase. You're a vase. A vase is empty until it's filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the power of God. So take out everything that's of you. And the way you do that, by the transforming of your mind. How is your mind transformed? First, repent of your sins. Repent it means turn away, walk away, don't do it anymore. And then ask the Lord Jesus Christ to fill you every area with himself. With himself. Say, Lord Jesus, fill me up. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to live and move and breathe and walk with your Holy Spirit doing the walking through me. With your Holy Spirit doing the talking through me. With your Holy Spirit looking through my eyes. Help me to see with the eyes of Jesus. Help me to look at a person the way that Jesus looks at that person. Help me to hear what the person's saying. Not what's coming out of their mouth, but what are they saying in their spirit? What are they trying to tell you? What are they saying? You need to understand your brothers and sisters in Christ. You need to understand the lost sheep that are herded hurt and wounded and, and been rejected by the so-called established church that's thrown them out on the street. You have to understand that there's many hurting people. And there and most of the most of the church you're not gonna like this at all, I'm sure. I'm gonna get probably a lot of unfriend requests or something. I don't know. I don't care. But a lot of the church is demon possessed. A lot of the people in the church are demon possessed because they are doing it their way with God. That's not possible. Light and darkness cannot dwell together. You have to have the Lord doing everything. If you are on the throne of your life, if you're looking to you for the answers, you are cursed is the man who relies on human flesh for his strength. Jeremiah 17, 5. You don't have the answers. Only God has the answers. Only God has the answers. Every question you have is answered in the Word of God. Every single question. You can find the answers. The Bible says in um, uh, 2 John uh, chapter 2, verse 27, or it might be 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, but it says you need no one to teach you. You have the Holy Spirit to teach you. You have the Holy Spirit to teach you. The Holy Spirit can speak to you. The Holy Spirit can teach you. Maybe you're all alone in, in, a, in a hotel or a, a cabin in the middle of nowhere and you don't have anybody to talk to you and to teach you and to fill you. The Holy Spirit is all you need. You need God to fill you up. He's the, he's the, the Holy Spirit is the power of God, the dunamis power of God. He can fill you up with all that you need. Lean on the Lord Jesus Christ. Read the word. It transforms your mind. It helps you to think the way that God thinks about things. We'll never have the, the total mind of God. God is God. He's, he's, he's awesome. He's sovereign. He's everything. I can't even express who he is. But I, I, I need 
I need you to read the Word of God, to reach out to the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I can't do it. Humble yourself. We can't do it. We can't do it. I, I, I did it for years. Everybody in my family works two and three jobs. You know, everybody just leans on themselves and work, 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 work. That's fine. But they're working about the world's business and about not about God's business. We're supposed to be storing up treasures in heaven, not on earth. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Run after the Lord. Become a God chaser. And when you get a hold of the Lord, hang on and don't let go. Hang on. David said, I cling to the Lord. I cling to the Lord. Hang on to the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you very, very much. Amen. God bless.